folks, Rod Machado here. I'd like to introduce you to an aerodynamic concept called dihedral. Now, dihedral is that quality of aircraft construction that adds lateral stability to your airplane. Trying to understand dihedral from a textbook is often, well, difficult, but it's a whole lot easier when you can see the concept in action on a video screen. So let me simplify the concept for you. No, not down to the Barney level, but in such a way that makes it easier to grasp the concept and add it to your repertoire of aviation knowledge. I hope you enjoy it. Most airplanes have a structural feature known as dihedral. Now, dihedral is the positive angle between the lateral axis of the airplane and a line through the center of each wing. The purpose of this feature is to increase the airplane's static lateral stability by returning the airplane to wings level flight when it's forced into an intentional or accidental side slip. So here's how the process works. In wings level flight, the relative wind rises from ahead and below the wing's leading edge and strikes the wing at something close to a perpendicular angle to its lateral axis. The lift produced by each wing is the same in wings level flight. Now, the moment the airplane is forced into a side slip, either intentionally or unintentionally, the relative wind strikes each wing at a slightly different angle. The left wing in this example has the relative wind striking its surface at a slightly larger angle than striking the right wing. The net result of the side slip is that the left wing temporarily produces more lift than the right wing, resulting in the airplane returning to wings level flight. Now, it's a common misconception among pilots that dihedral affects an airplane in a coordinated turn in lieu of a side slipping turn. In reality, dihedral has no effect on an airplane in a coordinated turn. Why? Well, because the relative wind strikes the wing at approximately the same head-on angle experienced in wings level flight. So there's no difference in lift produced between each wing by dihedral in a coordinated turn. And I want to make this point very clear. In a coordinated turn, there is no difference in lift produced between each wing because of dihedral. Again, as long as the turn is coordinated, dihedral does not cause a difference in lift to be produced on each wing. On the other hand, we've already seen that the moment a turn begins, the outside wing turns at a slightly faster speed than the inside wing. This causes the outside wing to produce slightly more lift and tends to increase the bank angle as long as the turn is kept coordinated and no side slip occurs. Therefore, when most airplanes are placed in a coordinated turn, yes, irrespective of bank angle, the tendency is for the bank to increase not decrease. And this bank increasing tendency, however, does vary between airplanes. For instance, some high wing airplanes are less affected by this bank increasing tendency in a coordinated turn because the lateral stability of these airplanes is aided by something known as the pendulum effect. As you've probably noticed, high wing airplanes have much less dihedral than low wing airplanes. And it turns out that the pull of gravity on the fuselage and its contents tends to return the airplane to wings level flight when the airplane is banked, regardless of whether the bank results in a slip or a coordinated turn. This is a fantastic course. I'm a commercial pilot working on my CFI certificate, so I've seen these concepts before, but never in quite this way. I'm thinking about using an inverted classroom where I have my students view Rod's videos at home and then discuss with them when we meet up. This way, my students can quickly move up the Bloom's Taxonomy Pyramid and become safer pilots sooner. The course is so entertaining that you'll want to watch it more than once and whenever you want a knowledge brush up. Rod and his team add comedic spice and an overall fun visual twist to what would ordinarily be rather dry and tough to grasp topics such as aerodynamics, weather theory, and flight planning. If you want to pass your IFR knowledge exam or your private pilot knowledge exam, then check out my 50-hour and or 40-hour Instrument Pilot eGround School or Private Pilot eGround School, respectively. Not only will you pass the exam, but you'll learn more about the essentials of IFR or VFR flying that you just won't get in other ground training programs. Why? Well, because I've been instructing for over five decades 
have personally written and illustrated seven aviation books, five of which are aviation textbooks, delivered training programs in all 50 states and many European countries, and have won countless awards from the FAA for my aviation training programs. In short, you won't be taught by a private pilot with limited experience and a basic ground instructor rating. Instead, you'll receive quality ground training that makes it easy and fun to learn. So visit rodmachado.com and check out the large selection of aviation educational courses.